Um, I'll bring you in, uh, Sophie, because there is a question directly to you, and that question is from Helga Burns. Yes, my question is to Sophie. Um, Sophie, as a leading female parliament uh, parliamentarian who has witnessed at, at first hand the, uh, and doc and the well documented misogynist and sexist abuse of our first female Prime Minister, how would you advise young women contemplating a political career, career in our country to overcome these shameful uh, attitudes from our parliamentarians? Well, I, I don't accept a, a lot of those uh, premises. There's, there's a lot um, that has gone on in politics that will continue to get on. It always has been. It's not that now is a particularly uh, more brutal time in politics. If you go through Hansard, if you look at what happens... Uh, I, I, I disagree with Tanya on one point, and that is you've got to get involved because the bad guys win. I don't think it's about that. I think it is about believing in what can bring out the possibilities of our nation, of our, of our people. What can we do to make this country a better place, that to give people... Question. Well, well, well my, my question co was you, being yeah. a female uh, parliamentarian, mm -hmm. a well-known female male parliamentarian, you would have witnessed it firsthand and well, it's been well documented in the in the newspapers, uh, everywhere. Are you, are you, can I just interrupt? Are you talking specifically about uh, Julia Gillard and what's been said about her? No, I'm talking about... Well, yes, but it's a general, it's a general uh, trend uh, in, uh, with politicians. I guess, yes, it has been very pointed with Julia Gillard. That's for sure. But I'm sure that um, that sort of attitude comes through... Uh, in a lot of areas, especially... Well, well, you don't accept it. I mean, I, I've faced some, some particular incidents. and you the, haven't heard the comments? Well, the, the, the worst um, incident I faced, which can only be thrown at a woman, is yeah. evil thoughts will turn your child into a demon. Now, I didn't claim misogyny, I didn't play, claim foul, but I was bitterly disappointed that neither the Prime Minister or the Deputy Prime Minister at the time said that was unacceptable behaviour. I was disappointed that none of the women in the Labor Party said that was unacceptable. I've been called a bitch in the Parliament. I've, I've, I've it's been said that I, by a Labor candidate well, running against me. I didn't yeah, say well, Labor or Labor. Tell you, no, no, I'll I tell said you, generally yeah. sure. politicians. And I've been, um, I've been, uh, it's been said that I couldn't represent my electorate because I didn't have a husband and children at the time. And Julie Gillard still came to my electorate and campaigned for this fellow. I think what you have to do You're is supporting believe, what I'm believe, um, uh, believe strongly enough in the, the values and ideas you. <laughs> think uh, this country should adopt and will take this country well, forward. Was, Sophie, I'm, I'll, 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 I'll leave you for a minute and I'll yeah. just follow up with Sophie. I mean, yeah. uh, one of your senators, Michaela Cash, um, mm. uh, made a pretty passionate, sort of weirdly passionate, actually, um, denunciation of the sisterhood for stabbing Julia Gillard in the back, uh, suggesting that they were now drinking from the chalice of blood, etc., <laughs> etc. I mean, it was pretty over the top. But, I mean, uh, is that, is, do, you, do you actually think... Um, that Julia Gillard was made a scapegoat for uh, the fact that she was a female Prime Minister? I don't think Julia's problems stemmed from the fact that she was a female. Uh, yes, there are differences. I know a lot of people, men, who voted for her in 2010 because they thought a woman would be different in politics and then they were subsequently disappointed. But I don't think that's the so that was the source of her problems. Uh, I think um, you have to go back at... The actual election in 2010, Kevin Rudd's destabilisation, the broken promises throughout her term and the fatal, fatal mistake of entering into partnership um, with the Greens and independents and the sort of government that delivered. When you had Labor members of caucus being utterly ignored because the, the Greens and the independents so were pandered to... not... True. Well, do you speak it's to... It's just well, not Tanya, true. I've spoken to your colleagues. You're not there when I have conversations with them. Oh, I You're doubt not many there. of my colleagues okay. spend a lot of time yeah. with you, Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can tell you this. Uh, Tony Windsor, Rob Oakeshott, all of them say that Tony Abbott was desperate to form government, that he would have done anything to form government. And the reason they went with Julia Gillard as Prime Minister is because she offered them better negotiation, 
better stability, better cons consultation. Now, at that time, you said that the government wouldn't last three weeks. We lasted now three years. We passed 590 pieces of legislation, important things like disability reform, like the education reform, so it'll deliver extra funding to our schools. We've created almost a million jobs since coming to government. I mean, these are huge achievements. And they've been done at a time when there has been an unprecedented level of negativity and hostility and opposition that has not once said, yes, in the national interests, we agree with that. That's we'll vote great. with you. It's, it does We've sound... Can I, can I just interrupt for one second? It does sound like... Um... You're suggesting a remarkably good record for Julie Gillard's government, so the question is, why did you get rid of it? Well, it has been a good record, and I think we're very fortunate that we've had, in our time in government between 2007 and now, two intelligent, hard-working, decent people yeah, but why, that we've but been why, able to look up why, to I as mean, leaders. The, the question well, that's been raised there is about misogyny. Julie Gillard raised it herself. Did the coup against Julie Gillard have anything to do with sexism and misogyny? Uh, I don't think the change in leadership is about sexism and misogyny, but I think that Julia Gillard experienced sexism during her time as Prime Minister without doubt, and I think that some of the things that were said about her were foul and unforgivable. OK. So can I just ask you, why did you get rid of her? Well, um, it was, a, it, was, it, because was it a case of what she said when she took over from Kevin Rudd, a good government that lost its way? Because we are a democracy and she stood and the majority of my colleagues uh, um, decided that a change of leadership was necessary. It was a democracy that Kevin Rudd didn't like the answer to, so he kept going back for more, back for more, um, back for more. Um, the reason why... Um, the, the main so reason that Kevin Rudd so gave for people to vote to for him, too, the main reason... Uh, <laughs> the main reason why okay. Kevin Rudd convinced his Cabinet colleagues was because he was against something. He wanted to stop Tony Abbott. And it's all very, very negative. Instead of saying what he wanted to do for the nation, the main reason... <laughs> The main argument used with caucus colleagues was, I've got a better chance of stopping Tony Abbott. It was as simple people, as that. People know what he wants to yeah. do. We want to we want to price carbon. We want to have a strong economy. We want to have a fair society. We want to introduce disability care. We want to transform our nation's school. We're rolling out the NBN so homes and businesses can be transformed. What is your policy for the future, Sophie? What does the Liberal Party stand for today? What do you stand for? Well, we, we, we can go through it. Well, we don't... We, there is a very big difference between the Labor Party and the Coalition. Do you, um, do you have... I mean, very simply, though, do you have a list like that of... Of uh, course we do. We've got the Real Solutions booklet. There's over 52 <laughs> policies. Like over 52... Poli well, no, Tanya. I mean, there are over 52 policies. We actually do want jobs growth. As the Shadow Minister for Industry, I know firsthand, visiting over 300 factories, why the carbon tax has exported jobs and emissions. Well, 150,000 jobs created since carbon pricing was well, introduced. Well, let me tell you about manufacturing jobs, Tanya. Under, <laughs> under this government... Under this government, we've seen one manufacturing job lost every 19 minutes. We've seen a red tape exponentially increase. We have seen the That's competitiveness... Right. Sorry? That's not right. No, it's not right. It's just See, another slogan. You can just get on national TV and say, that's not right. It's no, just you don't another know. slogan. And, and, you think, and, and you think that's OK. And you think you can just get away with it, Tanya. You the guys reality really is... not like each other, though? No. <laughs> The reality is we do have a plan. We have a plan for jobs, and that is getting rid of the carbon tax. It is getting rid of a billion dollars of red so tape a year. So you lose all the green it energy jobs stopping, straight away. It is, stopping, um, it is stopping the boats because we actually believe in stopping them. And the problem is, Tanya, if Julie Gillard's record was so good... Why did you get rid of it and why won't you go straight okay, to the Okay, we'll election? leave that rhetorical question hanging in the air. We've got time for <laughs> one last question. It's 